All right, for my second review of the month, The Spook of 2019, I decided I wanted to do something a little bit different. For the beginning of the month, I went for a subtle atmospheric depression horror. For the second game of the month, I decided I wanted to go for something a little more schlocky, something a little less ah scary, and something a little more uh, 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 scary. Since my free time is limited and I plan to do at least one more review this month, I figured it would be a safe bet to review a game I played a couple of times before and had already had some thoughts on so I could get some footage for it pretty quickly while reminding myself why I thought about it the way I already did, so the game I chose here was Manhunt 2. I played the first Manhunt game back in 2008 and I played Manhunt 2 in 2010. I enjoyed the first Manhunt a lot. My parents were against these types of realistically violent video games when I was growing up, so I had to acquire a copy through a friend from my PS2 and keep it hidden. It had an added feeling of getting away with something I felt like I should, which is what playing these types of games as a kid is all about. That big M rating on the box combined with the constant smothering and stabbing of bad guys made my prepubescent balls feel massive. Then, as a freshman, I went to the game store one day and my dad actually allowed me to pick up a copy of Manhunt 2 for my PSP. The gentleman at the game store convinced him it wasn't too bad because all the violence had a screen filter over it that kept me from seeing what was actually going on. This was a local game store and not a retail chain like GameStop and we had been going there my entire life so my dad trusted their judgment and allowed me to spend my money on Manhunt 2. Some which I still can't believe all these years later. Now this game is violent and the PC version that I'm playing for this review has no filter over the kills so if excessive violence and gore effects really bother you then this should probably be a video that you listen to rather than watch. God knows the YouTube machine will probably flag the fuck out of this because some of the stuff I'm going to show you. Funny enough, when I first played this game on the PSP as a 15-year-old kid, I was like, man, I really wish I could see all the carnage and gore without this stupid censorship filter trying to rob my hormonal teenage mind from all the senseless violence it craves. But after picking this game up for the PC a few years ago as an adult, I found myself actually wanting the filter back. The filter gave the game a weird aesthetic that fits with the story's theme of insanity and not being in control of yourself. Like the filter is a physical representation of the fuzziness that's going on inside the character's mind. I understand that this isn't the case and the filter only exists to serve censorship so the game could come out without an AO rating, but I stomach the idea of that a lot better than I can stomach some of the shit this game throws at me. Like this lovely gem, for example. <laughs> All that aside, I will say that there have been improvements to the original Manhunt game done here. There are more weapons to use, the inclusion of environmental kills, and the guns actually do something other than make you want to shut the fucking game off and play something better. Plus, there's this part right here, which I actually find pretty awesome, not gonna lie. <laughs> The story is much better too. There's some actual intrigue as to what's going on here, and even though the quote unquote twist is something you'll figure out in the first 10 to 15 minutes of playing the game, the story behind the twist is actually what you're here to see. I do enjoy a good chunk of the story moments here, and the voice acting isn't bad at all. Definitely better than the first Manhunt game. All these improvements aside though, Manhunt 2 still suffers from the big problem that Manhunt 1 had, which is that come the halfway point of the game, it starts to turn into more of a shooter than a stalk around kill fest, which sucks. Yeah, the shooting mechanics work a lot better this time, and it's more enjoyable, but shooting the guys is and what I came here to do. And this game doesn't really allow you to skip guns altogether either. A lot of NPCs towards the end of the game stand in one position facing the only way you can come in, so you really have no choice but to enter gunfights with them. Even if you do find a shadow and try to lure them over with noises, they'll often become alerted but just continue to stand in one spot facing your direction so that you don't really have much of a choice. I'm not sure anybody liked this about the first Manhunt game, and I don't think it was received more favorably in the second. Ultimately, coming away from playing this game for the third time, I kind of feel it was a waste of my free time. The second half of the game is pretty underwhelming with the exception of the last couple levels. The final sequence in the last level is extremely annoying and more frustrating than it is intense or exciting. It does a good job of putting all the skills you learn to the test, but in doing so, it also really highlights all the problems that the mechanics of the game have. For instance, there are constantly respawning enemies whose icons don't appear on your radar, and you're tasked with not only carrying a body to the other side of the area, but unlocking a gate so that you can even get it there. You have no idea where these guys are most of the time, and not only do they infinitely respawn, but they have insane line of sight. Plus, when you're carrying a body, you move extremely slow, and the whole 
whole thing just adds up to a quite frustrating last segment that took me close to an hour in total. Maybe I just suck, though. Who knows? Sitting down and writing up this review has been kind of difficult. I don't really have much to say about Manhunt 2. I wound up with what would probably turn out to only be a few minutes, so in an effort to have more to say and for a more thorough review, I decided to play through the game on insane difficulty as well to see if the higher difficulty would make the game more intense or change my opinion of it at all. Long story short, it didn't. The only things that the insane difficulty changes is that you have no radar to see where your enemies are at or where they're facing, and when you use guns, the orange crosshair that tells you you get an instant kill headshot is gone. However, the AI isn't any smarter, and I was able to power through the game in about four hours in the harder difficulty, so if you do play this game, it's really six of one, half a dozen of the other which difficulty you choose. I also found out that there are two endings, a good one and a bad one. Every other time I played this game, I got the good ending, but when I did the insane difficulty run, I got the bad ending. When I googled it, I read that the ending you get depends on how many style points you get and how many non-hostile people you kill or something like that, but I'm not really certain. I got more style points on the insane run, but I killed less innocent people, so I can't really say for sure. At first, I was excited to see that there was a level I hadn't played yet, but it's just a really short level that's nothing but a succession of bad guys with guns, so you can just power through it in like 10 minutes, pulling off headshots at close range. Put a real damper on any excitement I felt when I saw that there was content I hadn't played. So yeah, Manhunt 2 is better than Manhunt 1, but I don't recommend playing it. It's a lot of fun stalking around through the first five levels or so, and there are some really fun environmental kills that did get a squeal out of me, but ultimately the experience in its entirety is just kind of underwhelming and not really worth the six or seven hours it takes to complete it. I mean, I mean, this is literally all I have to say about it. This is the third time I played through this game in the last ten years, and this is the best I got, so I'd just say stay away from this one unless you're really, really curious. Later, Nick.